All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about modeling friction into our, mo our models of how objects behave. And we're going to go on to look at cases where you need to decide whether an object will slide or topple. So let's get a few key things out of the way. So in this video, we're going to be using Coulomb's law of friction. And that states that the force between two surfaces, or the frictional force, is equal to the product of the normal contact force, which you usually give the symbol R, and the coefficient of friction. So what is the coefficient of friction? Well, it's a value that, I don't know why it says greater than 1. Uh, it says to be greater than 0. And it takes into account the nature of the surfaces, so whether they're adhesive, how rough they are, whether the objects are attracted to each other, that kind of thing. And then there's two words we use to determine whether you should be talking about friction. So if objects or surfaces are described as smooth, that means there is no frictional force or it's negligible. Whereas if it says the surface is rough, that tells you you need to think about incorporating friction into your model and it can't be neglected. Okay, so a quick recap for from some M1 stuff. So normal contact force. So this is one that opposing the weight force of an object and it always acts perpendicular to the surfaces so we think the surfaces are in this direction normal contact force will be perpendicular going against the weight force we look at this one here the surfaces are in this direction which means the normal contact force is in this direction but it's still going upwards to at least partly overcome the weight force here's that's normal contact so Coulomb's law of friction, so we have the mu, which is the coefficient of friction, uh, multiplied by r, which is the normal contact force. And just a couple of key things to avoid problems later on. Always remember, friction cannot cause motion. So if you find that a driving force is actually less than this maximum friction value you've calculated, the friction will actually be equal to that driving force, not the f max. So it always resists a driving force, but it never actually will cause something to move. And another thing to think about is if an object is sliding or at the point of sliding, that's telling you the friction at that point is that F max value, and you'll come across the point of sliding thing a lot. All right, so let's have a look at an example. So we've got a 0.5 kilogram block, and it's sitting on a plane and we're using a string to hold it in place and actually get it to the point where it's about to move. So that's why this tension is here. And we know its weight force is acting directly downward, normal contact force is acting like that. And we've got an angle in here, which I'm going to be referring to as theta. And it tells you that sine theta is 0 0.6. Incidentally, there's a very, if sine theta is 0 0.6 this is one of the special cases where you get nice round numbers which is probably why they picked it because that means cos of theta is 0 0.8 it's just one of special cases okay so first of all let's calculate the frictional force so it's on the point of sliding so we know it's going to be the f max value so we're going to do mu r which is 0 0.7 times by 0.5, which is the mass of the block, times by 9.8, which is your g. And we need to do times by the cosine of theta. In this case, because we want the component of the weight force in that direction. And if that's theta, then that will be theta as well. Um, which, if you plug those numbers in, and including the 0.8, gives you 27 Four, four da, 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 newtons. Now we know it's at the point of slipping, so we know that the tension must be equal to the friction plus the component of weight force down the slope, which is that one. So it's going to be 27.44 blah, 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 plus 5 times 9.8 times 0.6, which is a grand total of 56.8 newtons to three significant figures. 
Okay, so that's an example where we've got an object sliding. Uh, where I mumble on, there it is, nice and typed out if you couldn't read anything. So now we're going to move on and discuss the idea of toppling or falling over. Now, there a lot of the problems you'll come across are around the idea of does an object slide or does it topple? And we need to know the conditions under which both of them will happen. So sliding occurs if your force down the slope is greater than your frictional force. Fairly simple. Toppling is a little bit more complicated, so it occurs if your centre of mass goes beyond a pivot point. So if we look at this object here, it's going to pivot, if it's going to topple, it's going to pivot about this point which I've marked A. And hopefully you can see that fairly simply, it's going to pivot about that point. So it's at the point of toppling when the centre of mass, which will be at the centre of the object, and weight force is directly over that point, so you'll actually see a line when, if you draw the weight force, the line joining it and the corner there. Okay, and so at this point, the weight force is acting directly down through the pivot, and the resultant of your frictional force, which, if we think about it, your frictional force will be going that way, and your normal contact force will be going that way. And if we join those tip to tail, and they're perpendicular, the resultant of that would be equal to the weight force, but obviously in this case would be acting vertically upwards. Okay, so that's the case. So let's have a look at the example so you can see how this works. So the first clue you're looking at toppling is when they give you dimensions of the shape, because when you're modeling things as particles, the dimensions are not important. So the fact they've given you units suggests toppling is going to be involved. So we've got three kilogram object on the slope. The angle is increased, and it wants to know does it slide or topple if the coefficient of friction is 0.6. So let's look at sliding first of all. Okay, so first of all, we know F is mu r, which is 0.6 times 3 times 9.8 uh, times by the cosine of the angle at which you will essentially slide. And then we also know that the force down the slope is going to be W sine theta. So in in actual case, it will slip if the f res equals zero is going to slip. So that would mean that the force down the slope, so 3g sine theta, minus the friction, so 3g uh, mu cosine theta, would be equal to zero. So that will make the result zero, which would mean the force down the slope was equal to the friction. So let's do a bit of scrolling. So first of all, let's get rid of this 3g terms. Now what we're going to do is divide both sides by cosine of theta. So sine theta divided by cosine of theta gives you tan theta. Um, this is going to leave you with mu with zero. So you, in this case, you know that tan theta is equal to 0.6, which was the coefficient of friction, which gives you an angle of 31 degrees. Okay, so this is the angle at which it will slide. So let's have a look at a topple, the case of toppling. So we said it will topple if the centre of mass gets above the pivot point. So let's do a sketch. Okay. So we know this angle in here is our theta. So let's sketch in three lines. So we know that your centre of mass must be acting down there, and we can continue that dotted line up all the way up to that corner there. And let's think about 
some triangles. So you've got your right angle in there, and you know that angle in there will be theta. And what you can work out is actually this angle in, angle in here would also be theta at that. I suggest you pause this and do some manipulation of triangles if you don't believe me on that one, but you can show that that angle there is also theta. And given that we know this one is 0 0.4 and this one is 0 0.8, that means that using your Sokotoa rules, tan theta is going to be 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.8, which is obviously a half, which means theta is going to be take the value of 20 seven degrees. So as we see this value here is smaller than this value up here so it's going to topple before it slides so it topples without sliding. Okay so hopefully that's helped to clear that up and though we've seen some cases of sliding and toppling and then going on from this you can look at some more complex examples of applying these principles.